All right, we're here to take a look at Magnus Ditlev's Scott Plasma. As you can see, it's a Scott Plasma with the metallic green in the front fading to black at the back in 58 XL size frame, of course, because Magnus is quite a tall guy. He's uh, got a custom carbon monocoque uh, front end there, which we're going to get to in a minute, and he's got uh, his saddle pointed quite low down. We're going to start down here at the drivetrain because it's quite interesting what he's got on there. So Magnus's drivetrain, as you can see, starts with a pretty large carbon digirit chainring. It is a 60 tooth chainring and he's running it in one bar. So he has no smaller option there. Uh, it is massive, really. At the back, he's got that paired with a Shimano Altegra derailleur, which is interesting because he could definitely be on a Dura-Ace 12 speed, but instead he's on the Altegra 11 speed. He does have the ceramic speed OSPW error on there, of course, with his Danish flag on there. His name is on the other side of that. Uh, the cassette is an 1130. So his biggest gear is, in is a 6030 to get up those steep Polani climbs. Uh, I'm sure he'll be okay though with that. And now let's talk about his wheels. As you can see, the back wheel is the brand new Head Jet 180. That's specific for Kona wheel where disc wheels are not allowed, uh, but this is as deep as you can go without actually being a disc. It is obviously built on an aluminum rim and it has this carbon fairing going 180 millimeters deep. He has paired that back wheel with the Vittoria Speed Graphene 2.0 tire in 25 millimeter at the back. But interestingly, in the front, he has a different tire. So in the front, he doesn't have a Vittoria tire. He has the Conti GP 5000 TT Tour de France version, also in 25 millimeter, but a completely different brand to his rear tire. Clearly he's tested that and found that is the fastest. He's got that mounted onto a head Vanquish 80 millimeter, obviously head's full carbon version. Uh, it is not running tubeless though, so we're gonna assume he's got latex tubes in there uh, because he clearly is not running it tubeless. So his saddle is the Synchros Balcara TT, and as you can see, he's got it at a pretty aggressive forward angle. It does have these gripper strips on the, on the top, so that'll obviously help him not to slide off it, and he's a pretty tall guy. He's got it mounted pretty far back too. He's not in a terribly aggressive position, but again, like I say, he's a very tall guy. Uh, behind the saddle, he does have this uh, unbranded X-Lab Gorilla cage uh, to hold his bottle behind there in carbon, of course. Uh, down here behind his saddle, he does have the spares bottle mounted on here. There is nothing in it at the moment. We assume he's going to put his race day spares in there for race day. <laughs> Interestingly, no bottle on the frame. Clearly, that's the least aerodynamic place to put a bottle, so he's decided not to do it. But he's also not got a straw going through into that internal hydration system, so I don't think he's using that either. He does have another bottle cage mounted up here, also an unbranded X-Lab Gorilla <laughs> carbon cage, uh, and that is mounted on this, which is a custom carbon uh, monocoque aero bar, which is pretty interesting. So this has been custom made for him and he actually only just installed it on his bike right now. He is still going to uh, trim down the, some, of the, some of the pad in here because that's uh, gonna flatten the wind a little bit. So he's gonna trim that down and get it really neat. As I say, it's only just been put on his bike. It is a uh, custom made for him. He did spend three days in the wind tunnel in Silverstone uh, with Simon Smart and his whole Danish team refining everything, not just this front end, but the whole bike, his bike position, everything to get it as aerodynamic as possible for this race here in Kona. And yeah, you can tell because there is nothing on here that is going to create any drag. It is quite a setup. It does have this custom computer mount in the middle between his arms that only just fits between his arms. Clearly, it is really squeezed in there uh, for his head unit to go on there. He's opted to not put any grip tape or even a grip strip on that base bar. I don't think Magnus is planning to spend too much time on the base bar on race day. And finally, down here, 
all that power is going to be going through some Wahoo Speedplay pedals with the Aero Cup on the one side to keep them as aero as possible. All that Magnus power will be tracked using a quark power meter in the crank arm there. Well, that is Magnus Ditlev's bike. He is one of the uber bikers in the world of triathlon, and it is a pretty fast looking machine. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some more bike course records coming from Magnus in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up to support the channel and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our content.